somebody saying we give our life to Jesus. Verse 18, Acts 26, 18. Paul is telling King Agrippa, he's standing in front of a king, and he's saying, this is what Jesus told me to do, to go and preach the gospel so that, here's what he says, to open their eyes, to turn them from darkness to light, from the power of Satan unto God. So if there's any doubt in you that there's two kingdoms, that there is a kingdom of Satan unto God, Paul says right here, there is darkness, that you get freed from darkness and go into light power of Satan under the power of God, that they may receive forgiveness of sins and inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith that is in me. So he wants you to come out of Satan and come into God. Hallelujah. Now, Romans 10. Let's look there. About being saved. Verse 6. Now listen to this. But the righteousness, which is of faith, speaks on this wise. So the righteousness that comes through faith. This is how you talk. Look, this is opposite of what Mar says. Listen. Who shall ascend into heaven? That is to bring Christ down from above. Who shall descend into the deep? That is to bring up Christ again from the dead. But what saith it? The word is near you, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. He says, Who's, you don't have to wait for God to come down from heaven or him to be risen from the dead again. Because it's finished. The righteousness that's of faith understands that it has been finished on the cross okay and it's already in your heart from your mouth to your heart that's where your righteousness your freedom is okay it preaches this thou shalt confess with thy mouth the lord jesus you confess with your mouth that he's your lord you believe in your heart that god has raised him from the dead thou shalt be saved Okay? That's why the disciples didn't get saved until Jesus rose from the dead. They had to believe that he was risen from the dead to be born again. The guy on the cross hanging with Jesus says, Jesus said, today you'll be with me in paradise. He was not born again yet. He entered into life. He went into Abraham's bosom. But Jesus went down there and preached the gospel. Okay, They had to hear the gospel that Jesus rose from the dead. That's the gospel. It's him crucified, him rose from the dead, and now he makes a new creation, a new creature, when a new man, when the Spirit of God comes inside of you. Verse 10, For with the heart man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the Scripture says, Whosoever believes on him shall not be ashamed. There's no difference between Jew and the Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Okay? For whosoever shall call. That means if you call, you'll be rescued from your sin, your sickness, your disease. Okay? You go down to verse 7. It says, go on down. It says, faith comes from hearing and hearing by the word of God. Right? Hebrews 4. Look, look what happens when you hear the word of God. Verse 2, for unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them. So when the gospel's preached to you, you hear the word of God. But the word preached did not profit them, being not mixed with faith in them that heard it. So you are to hear the word of God preached, and it's supposed to be mixed with faith. That means you're supposed to respond, understand it, and respond with corresponding action. When you get the gospel preached to you, you are supposed to respond in repenting, turning away from your sin, and turning to God, giving him everything, and you get baptized in water in front of witnesses saying, hey, I repent. I turn away from living for myself, and now Jesus is my Lord. When you get baptized, you, get, you die with Christ in the water. You're planted with him in death. But like as he was raised from the dead, even so you are risen with him from the dead. He's risen unto new life. You come alive with Christ. You are risen with him and you are seated with him in position at the right hand of God as a son of God. Now you have a position in the family of God, adopted. You are adopted in the family of God as a son of God. It says, as many of them received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God. You are risen as a child, just like a child comes out, born out of the womb, 
he comes out saying, wah, wah, da, 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 or da, da, da. They, they mumble their words. When you were born again, you get filled with the Holy Ghost. And you are given a prayer language, the language of your family, guys, the language of the nation you now are grafted into. You are a citizen of heaven, just like a new baby. Don't speak real coherent words. They babble. You get just like a baby. You get a, a, a new prayer language from the heaven that you are born from now. The Bible says you are born of God, not of man or the will of man, but you are born of the spirit. And you are now given the language to pray by the Spirit, okay? Look, John chapter 3. I'm going to drive this in all the way. Nicodemus came to Jesus. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. So how do you get into the kingdom? You must be born again. Nicodemus asked him, well, how can a man be born when he's old? Can he enter into the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Oh, my goodness. Can you believe that? And he's like, well, how do you get born in the womb again? Thinking naturally, Jesus answered, verily, verily, I say unto you, Nicodemus, except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Okay? No man comes to the Father except the Spirit draw him. When you respond to the Spirit drawing you, how does he draw you? By preaching the word. By teaching, he sends a laborer to you to speak the word, okay? When you respond, when it mixes with faith and you respond to the Spirit, the Spirit gives you the, he grants you repentance. He comes in you, gives you the ability, gives you the measure of faith, not a measure, the measure, the same measure I got. Holy Spirit comes in you. He engrafts, the Bible says, the engrafted word of God. He inseminates you like a man inseminates a woman with seed, the Spirit of God, just like um, when you go into Mary, the mother of Jesus, the Holy Spirit came in her and born a new man inside of her, okay? You receive the Spirit of God and a new man is born. The seed of the man is in you, okay? The seed, the semen of God, I guess you can say, you know, is inside of you and grafted, Okay? Then you go get baptized in water. So you're born of the Spirit, and you're born in water being baptized. You Just like a woman, a baby is in the water of a, a womb, okay? When you get saved, the Spirit of God comes in you. Then when you get baptized, like the water breaks, you come out of the water and into the natural. When you get saved, you go get baptized in water. You go into the water and die with Him. You come out of the water, out of the womb, and be born again into a new person, a new creation. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are new. All things are of God. You are no longer cursed with your father, your earthly father. There is no generational curse. There's no curse on you. You are no longer held to the standards that the earthly man has. You are now created a new race, a new species. You are now created a higher class of being now than those around you. You are actually a higher class of being than unbelievers. You are now one with Jesus. Okay, and we're going to keep reading this. It says, except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Verse 6, that which is born of the flesh is flesh, but that which is born of the Spirit is is spirit. John 4 says God is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Okay? You get a prayer language is your spirit man praying. You pray in the spirit. You worship God in the spirit, guys. You are now a spirit man first. You are empowered to tell your mind and your body and your will what to do. You are now in control with authority and power to not let sin dwell in your body. You have the ability to tell sickness to get out of your body. You are now one with Jesus and have authority over your mind and your body. Therefore, sin cannot have dominion over you. You don't have to let sin reign in your body anymore. Okay? Verse 7, Marvel not that I said unto thee, you must be born again. Look, verse 8, the wind blows where it goes, and here you hear the sound thereof, but you cannot tell where it comes from or where it goes. So is everyone that is born of the Spirit. Not of the will of man, but born of God. 
Okay? That's what happens when you repent and believe. When you respond and enlist into that army, into the new family of God, and take on a new surname, a new name, Jesus is your new name, you take on a new family, adopted with a new father, you have a new lineage, you have, go back one generation to the Heavenly Father, you have a big brother, Jesus, the spirit that's in your father and your big brother, Jesus, now is in you, it's in them and in you, you're one with heaven, now, whatever you bind on earth is bound in heaven, whatever you loose on earth is loose in heaven, now, whatever you touch with two of you agreeing on anything, it is done by your Father in heaven because he's in you. And when you agree, anything is done. Now you ask and you shall receive, you seek and you find. Verse 14, and as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so the Son of Man be lifted up, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have a eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that Whosoever believes in him, trusts him, gives your life to him, you will not perish, but have everlasting life. Verse 17, for God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Verse 18, he that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten son of God. Okay? Verse 36, he that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life, and he that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abides on that person. Verse 24, verily, verily, I say unto you, he that hears my word and believes on him that sent me hath everlasting life, and shall not in the future come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. Verily, I say unto you, the hour is coming, and now is, when the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of God, and they that hear shall live. Okay, verse 39, search the scriptures, for in them you think they, you think you have eternal life, but they are they which speak of me. He's saying the scriptures talk about me, guys. Look at verse uh, John 6, 43. Jesus therefore answered and said to them, murmur not among yourselves. No man comes to, the, to me except the Father which hath sent me draw him. He did that by the Spirit. And I will raise him up at the last day. It is written in the prophets. And they shall be all taught of God. Every one of you, every man, son and daughter, man and woman, Gentile or Jew, all will be taught of God because the Spirit of God is in you. He'll teach you all things. Every man, therefore, that hath heard and hath learned of the Father comes unto me. Not that any man hath seen the Father, save he that is of God. He hath seen the Father. Verily I say unto you, he that believes on me hath everlasting life. I am the bread of life. Your fathers did eat manna in the wilderness and are dead. This, me, my body, is the bread which come down from heaven that a man may eat thereof and not die. Verse 63, it is the spirit that quickeneth or gives life, resurrection life, the Holy Spirit. The flesh doesn't do anything. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. John 8, Okay, verse 29 up there, it says, He that has sent me is with me. The Father hath not left me alone. The Spirit of God was in Jesus. For I do always those things that please him. Verse 30, And he spoke these words. Many believed in him. And then said Jesus to those Jews that believed in him, If you continue in my word, then are you my disciples. So you have to continue in the word. It's not getting excited about the word. It's continuing in his word. Then are you my disciples indeed. So when are you disciples? Those who hear his word and do it and continue in it. Those are disciples. Look at what he says now. And you shall know the truth and, he says and, and you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. Okay? People preach that halfway most of the time. He's saying if you continue my word, you're my disciples and you will know when you're continuing, continuing in my word and being a disciple, you will know the truth and the truth will make you free. See, it's about hearing his word and continuing, being a disciple, being teachable and trainable. Verse 33, and then answered him, we be Abraham's seed and we were never in bondage to any man. How sayest you that we shall be made free? And Jesus says, verily, verily, I say unto you, whosoever commits sin is the servant of sin. 
and the servant abides not in the house forever, but the son abides forever. If the Son, therefore, shall make you free, you shall be free indeed. He didn't make servants. He made sons, and sons are free. Okay? John 14, 12. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me the works that I do, shall he do also. And greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. 13 and 14. And whatsoever, whatsoever, there we go again. Whatsoever you shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. He says, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. I will pray the Father. Look what he says. I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. Who's he talking about? The Holy Spirit. Even the Spirit of truth. Whom the world cannot receive because it sees him not, neither knows him. The world, that's, anyways. But you know him. Look at this. For he dwells with you now before the cross. But after the cross, he shall be in you. Everything in this Bible, before the cross, the Holy Spirit was with them. After the cross, he made it so that the Holy Spirit would be in you in you and with you and on you. You see that? The big difference is God wanted to get his spirit in you. Verse 18, I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you yet a little while and the world sees me no more, but you'll see me because I live, you'll live also. At that day, you shall know that I'm in the Father and you are in me and I am in you. Notice he calls when he puts the spirit in him that Jesus says, I'll be in you because the spirit's in you. Verse 21, he that hath my commandments and keeps them, he it is that loves me. And he that loves me shall be loved of my Father. And I will love him and will manifest myself to him. Verse 26. Well, verse 23. Jesus answered and said to them, if a man love me, he will keep my words. And my Father will love him and will come unto him and make our, notice he said our, abode, home living situation with him father son holy spirit we will make our abode with that person who loves me and keeps my words in other words not just saying a prayer guys you got to love him and be obedient you got to repent and turn and start to live his way when you live his way he makes his abode the holy spirit comes and lives in you you've got the father the son and the holy ghost verse 26 but the comforter which is the holy ghost whom the Father will send in my name. When did he send them? Acts chapter 2. Okay. He shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. Verse 26. But the Holy, but the Comforter, who, but when the Comforter has come, whom I will send unto you from the Father, even the Spirit of truth, which proceeds from the Father, he shall testify of me. John 16. John 16. This is good. He says, Nevertheless, I'll tell you the truth. It is expedient. It is to your advantage for you that I go away. I need to go to heaven. For if I don't go to heaven, go away. The comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart and go into heaven, I will send him unto you. When he has come, he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. Of sin because they believe not on me. And I'll just skip through that because I ain't going to come. Look what he says. <clears throat> Verse 12. And this is huge, guys. He says, I have yet many things to say unto you, but you cannot bear them now. You see what he says? He said, I got a lot of things to say to you, but you can't bear them now. All right? Notice what he says. I, it's before the cross. I can't tell you everything I want to tell you. You hear me? Now, all them people out there that harp and call me a false prophet because I believe that Jesus Christ fulfilled everything, okay? And I believe what Paul said. There's a lot of people right now teaching. I'm about to drink a spark. <laughs> Woo, buddy. So, everybody out there that says that, you know, you still have to keep the law and you got to be circumcised and you got to do all this stuff, guys. They don't understand the gospel. That's why I'm taking this time for you guys. You need to understand 
completely what the gospel is after the cross okay after the cross he says there i have many things to say unto you but you can't bear them now how be it he's like look you can't bear them now but when he the spirit of truth has come he will guide you into all truth he will not speak of himself but whatsoever he'll hear from the father and jesus he speaks and he will show you things to come he shall glorify me and receive of mine everything that's of mine and will show it all unto you 15 all things that the father has are mine jesus said this therefore said i that the holy spirit he shall take of mine and will show it to you so the holy spirit's job is to take everything that the father gave jesus and to show it to us all right that's what happened with paul paul when he got saved he went into heaven okay and had revelations jesus taught him by revelation the gospel the good news the gospel that is to be preached around the world jesus couldn't say fully outright that before the cross because he had to fulfill the law but when jesus rose from the dead he spent 40 days showing his disciples the gospel for them to understand everything the law of moses everything in the prophets and the psalms said about him in the kingdom of god and he commanded them to go into all the world and preach the gospel. Okay? It took time for the for God to get the church, like Peter, to get out of just preaching to the Israelites or the Jews and, and people in Israel. Because it took God giving Peter a vision for him to go to the Gentiles and preach to them. Okay? But when he went to the Gentiles, he found out that it was by faith that them people believed. Them people didn't have to get circumcised. They didn't have to memorize different prayers or different festivals and feasts okay they didn't have that there was nothing said that you have to you guys have to decide to do a sabbath you have to decide to do these festivals you have to decide to do all this stuff before you gentiles get saved he did not say the holy ghost did not tell them that they got to be like jews to be saved okay now the apostle paul received the revelation and took those mysteries and he taught the churches in plain speech jesus christ him crucified and now a new man a new creation and now that you're a new creation he taught them the law of liberty how to love god and love others and to live in liberty to live in freedom but to live by in freedom to use that freedom to love others okay but paul taught people not to you know, he taught them how to live in wisdom with all the different types of people to walk in love. And these days, people tell you you're going to hell if you don't go to Sabbath or keep a Sabbath because they'll tell you, listen, we all right now, I'm on a Sabbath day right now, okay, technically, right, Sunday. I'm on a Sunday and I am Sabbathing, quote unquote. I take this day and I don't work. I rest. You can choose any day. If you're off from work on Mondays, then you know what? You can make a Sabbath day out of Monday. But Jesus has become our Sabbath. We have entered into his rest. It has been finished at the cross. And now we are in his rest. I don't have to follow a long list of things to do in order to keep a Sabbath. In other words, how many laws do you have to have to make your Sabbath day a ritualistic sabbath are you not going to cook are you not i mean at what point do you make laws for yourself and keep all these rules for your sabbath day see that's where you get into bondage okay and then you really get into bondage when you start telling others they got to do the same thing okay you have freedom in christ i live every day in his rest okay and i take days where I rest my body and I spend time with my family and I spend time with God. And I enjoy doing what he tells me to do to rest my body. And I enjoy resting and spending quality time with my family. Okay? But I have freedom to do that. If I go on a vacation, say I work really hard for three weeks straight and I don't get full Sabbath, all I get is half a day Sabbath or whatever, I'll go take a vacation and take a Sabbath, what we call it. I'll go out there and take some rest and get away and I'll relax and I'll spend a lot of amazing time with the Lord and refresh myself in his presence. 
because I have freedom to do that. I'm not bound by a law that tells me I have to do it on a certain day. All right. Okay. Here we go. I need to, I'm trying to listen. I'm fed up, man. I'm so fed up with all the stuff out there. People are so bound and you know, they're in bondage when they don't really do anything for Jesus. I mean, you can go right now to some of these schools right now where they teach all the, all the Hebraic roots and you can stand up. I know someone who went there to the Hebraic roots and stood up in their school and asked them how many people has led someone to Jesus in the last year. Not one hand went up. So you get so worked up on going back into the law, you forget to do the one real true law that we have is to love God and love others. And that's to go and preach the gospel, make disciples, teach them everything Jesus commanded you, not what Moses commanded, okay? And those people, you get all worked up and they tell people and they get so busy labeling everybody as nar and labeling everybody as a false or this is a, I have people tell me that's a false channel because I, someone said I was a false YouTube channel or fake and someone said I was a false teacher because I said there's, I said something contrary to the, the flat earth conspiracy doctrine. I said there's galaxies out there. And they said that's false, and I'm a false teacher because I said they're galaxies, because I didn't line up with their pet doctrine. You see what happens when people get so consumed with pet doctrines or pet traditions, and they get so consumed with all these teachings that when someone doesn't say what they say or they believe with their pet doctrine, they call everybody out there false, when in reality, they never mention the scripture. Never. Most of the time, they don't, Okay. What I'm saying is, is the scripture, the word of God is the final discussion, the final authority. That is what it says. And it means what it says. It doesn't matter what you want to believe about a flat earth or anything. I can look in the, I can look in the sky right now and see stars. Okay. Yeah. I can get a, I can get a telescope right now and look at stars and see galaxies. Okay. You think that Satan has everybody so trapped that they've built a big movie screen around the whole sky, around the planet, and made everything fake? Come on, guys. I'm tired of the flat earth people attacking me, saying I'm false because I said I went to heaven and I saw galaxy-like stuff around the throne. Come on, people. All right. Okay. Here we go. I'm not trying to... I'll, I like to mention doctrines like that and really drive it home, okay, why I believe it. But I'm not going to address it fully now. But I can tell you right now, it doesn't matter if the earth is a half cylinder or a full round thing or flat or whatever. It doesn't matter. What matters is, is you have been saved and born again so that you can go bring power to save others, okay, and to make disciples. If you don't do that, if you focus on your pet doctrines your whole life, you will find yourself in hell because you're not obeying the true law of liberty. And if you don't wake up right now, it's going to be too late soon. You'll be finding yourself out there with the world in compromise because when it comes down to you getting your head cut off, you will rather go with pet doctrine people rather than holding fast to the head Jesus. Okay. Now look what he says here. He says the spirit of truth has come. He'll guide you into all truth. Okay. And he'll show you everything that he has already given you, okay? But I want you to catch this. Jesus couldn't say everything before the cross. He rose from the dead and spoke plainly, opened their understanding in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms, teaching the disciples that he had fulfilled it all. Okay? 